Hello guys, welcome to my channel. <laughs> Hi guys, how you doing? This is another vlog. And yeah, I don't even know what this vlog is going to be about, but let me just vlog, okay? How is everyone doing? I just finished filming a video right now about styling of my womb and all that good stuff. <laughs> like Nelo will say. And all that good stuff. So you guys should go and watch that video. And yeah, hi. You want the rose? Yes. Like the one I gave Cora. Oh yeah, let me bring rose for the you. What color thing. do you want? I want pink. You want pink? No. What color do you want? Yellow. Yeah. You yellow. Want, she you wants want yellow. Yeah. Okay, let me go and get rose for you. Hey guys, so I started this video yesterday. My children came and just distracted me, and that was this. Finally, what's happening? I forgot that I started the vlog. Anyway, how are you guys doing today? I'm going to be making moi moi. Um, yeah, I'm going to make it moi moi. I'm just going to show you guys the moi moi. So I'm just going to show you guys the moi moi ingredients before we grind it. Okay. So we have the beans. Then we have onions. Lots of onions. And then we have tatashe and we have red pepper and yeah so i almost forgot adding crayfish see eh? let me tell you the secrets to very good moi moi okay i use your paper and pen jot this down okay <laughs> the secret to very good moi moi is lots of tatashe lots of crayfish lots of onions and a good amount of vegetable oil once you have all these ingredients together if you like add corned beef or don't add the add egg don't add the add fish don't add the, your moi moi will still taste fantastic okay um just add when you're mixing just add a little bit of um seasoning cube and salt even if you add just salt self with all these things i just mentioned now if you add enough of it into your moi moi it's going to taste really good anyway so let me just go ahead and add this and then uh we we'll proceed to grind and i'll just show you guys when i'm mixing the moi moi and wrapping it anyway that's going to be my work for today i'm actually tired i wanted to go and sleep but i remember that i have a family i had to stand up so <laughs> that's why i look the way i look i'm just i'm really tired actually anyway yeah let's get to work <laughs> I 
biscuit. I don't want to taste. Nobody is giving you actually. Mm. Did anybody offer to give you? Please. Please, can I do it? Please. Okay, I think. Please, I can do it. I can do it every day. I can do it. Hi guys, good morning. It's a beautiful morning out here. And yeah, I'm just looking around. You guys, we have a farm in this compound. Let me show you. Anyway, so yeah, I was contemplating having a farm here until um, our guest man planted some corn here because I didn't believe that something would really grow on this soil. Um, but when I saw the way the and I didn't know I can't grow so fast like this can't grow in just less than two months It grew to this length or this height. I mean in less than two months and it's already bringing out Or maybe around two months. I'm not sure. It's already bringing out um, uh, What do you call it? Corn. It's already bringing out fruits <laughs> anyway So yeah, so after after this corn season is over when we're done with this corn I'm going to level here and plant a proper proper garden because as much as i like corn I don't, I don't i don't i really don't care about growing corn myself what i would love to grow myself is vegetables you know basically vegetables like important vegetables that we use daily in the house herbs and stuff like that so yeah i'm supposed to go and have breakfast now but i don't know what i'm going to eat let me just go and prepare breakfast and i'll see you guys soon Say hi. Just breathe faster. Can you say hi? Hi. You guys, please tell him to do a video with us. Nah. What is nah? nah. We need to do a video together. Nah. We need to do husband tag. <laughs> tag, tag yeah. Husband tag. Now. Years, I need tag to him. introduce him to you people. But I also want to. He's, he's shy. Hurry, have you taken your bath? Because Minority needs to bath me. You cannot bath yourself. I can buff myself. I wanted to buff myself. You wanted to buff yourself? Yes, I wanted to buff myself. But I don't want me to buff myself. Are you sure you can buff yourself? That's the question. Yes. Mm -hmm. I show, yeah, me, show me how to buff. So, you guys, I want to quickly address a comment that I saw on my last video, okay? And yeah, this vlog is not going as planned, but whatever. Let me just address this comment. I, I got this comment on my last video. I didn't respond to the comment because I knew that this person needs... These people, because not just one person. I'm sure there are a lot of people that have kind of mindset. So I said these people need to be addressed. I got some messages like this. Inbox, Instagram. I was just like, wow, happy they have come. <laughs> anyway, it's expected, okay? Now, 
Let me just read the comments while and I'll address it, okay? The person says, Adeze, my advice to you. Okay. The person says, Adeze, my advice. Why not try one again? Making it three. God will provide for you, but don't tie your womb. It's a sin before God. Now, first of all, if you guys don't understand what I'm talking about, in my last video, I talked about why I want to tie my womb. I was like basically weighing my pros and cons and reasons why I'm considering it. Also reasons why I might not do it, okay? I didn't say I was, if I was definitely going to tie my womb. I was saying I was leaning more towards it, but at the same time, it's not something I'm sure of because I had so many reservations about it, okay? But trust me, one of those, none of those reservations is whether it is a sin or not, okay? Because first of all, when I see people, I've gotten many comments like this, that is a sin, is a sin. And I keep asking, how is it a sin? How? I need someone to tell me, to explain this, and I'm not even kidding. I need someone to explain this thing um, to me using scriptures, scriptural backing. Because I noticed that Nigerians, in fact, human beings basically, but Nigerians specifically, we've been we become so religious in our mindset that a lot of things that we proclaim as sin is just because we don't like it or it sounds like a sin uh -uh, i don't want because it sounds or it feels like i want proof from the bible scriptural backing that this thing you are doing is a sin and if you say time of my womb is a sin are you now saying that all forms of contraceptive is a sin if that's what you're saying then fine i understand your argument like i mean when I say I understand, I don't mean I agree with it, but I understand where your mindset might be coming from. If you say all forms of contraceptive or contraception is a sin, but if you are saying, no, not all forms are, are sins, just time of womb, can you explain why time of womb is different from, let's say, IUD or whatever, whatever else, okay? So genuinely, if you are the kind of person that, if you are someone who has scriptural backing for why it's a sin for a woman to tie her womb to prevent um, for that conception, please explain to me in the comment section. Now, but let's continue reading this comment. Now, she says, um, three children is not bad at all. May maybe God will give you a male child to complete it. Now, saying three children is not bad at all. Are we bringing children to this world based on what sounds good or not? Doesn't sound good. I gave reasons in my last video why I keep saying I'm not going to just bring children into the world I'm not, I'm not prepared for or I don't plan for. When I say plan, I mean adequately plan for to, to the best of my human ability. Because now God still has plans for my kids and he's still going to provide for them and everything and everything else. But I am not going to by myself bring a child into this world I know that I cannot take care of simply because it, it doesn't sound bad. Okay? Because let me tell you something. The mere act of having children does not mean that those children will be provided for. If not, we won't have home homeless kids. We won't have kids on the streets begging. We won't have street kids in um, motherless babies' homes and orphanages and stuff like that. Okay? We won't have kids like that. So don't make it seem as if... The act of bringing children into this world is just a blessing on its own. I want to bring children into this world somehow, somehow they're going to be provided for. It doesn't work that way. Okay, you guys should wake up and smell the coffee. There are a lot of homeless children out there. Okay, now and like I said, I never said I never wanted. I didn't want more children. I've never said I don't want more children. What I said was that I am contemplating adopting more children. I wanted. I want to adopt more children. Okay, I know I can. I know I'm capable of taking care of. At least two more kids anyway let me just continue she now said maybe god will give you a male child to complete it when i saw this comment there uh, chai chai i genuinely felt bad for this person okay and let me even quickly address this thing because i got a lot of i've been in fact over time it's not even just on my last videos i keep getting comments about try one more so that you have a male child give your, your husband a male child you know your uh, Igbo men like male children you know it helps with their ego somebody even sent me one long email telling me about how a male child and Igbo men it helps with their ego if not the man will go and look for children outside wanting wanting and that's not i didn't even feel anger towards them to be honest what I felt is sadness for them. I felt pity for them. I felt, ah, like I felt serious pity for them. And the reason why I felt pity for them is that all these comments, since I've known myself, since I've been an adult, since I've been married, since I've been having kids, and all the comments I have gotten about a male child came from women. Later, I'll be shouting pechaki, pechaki up and down. They all came from women. And trust me, I have male friends. I've, I, I mean, I've discussed things like this with several different male friends. Not one, I have not seen any male 
any guy that has told me things like, you know, your husband will want a son or try and get a son for your husband or even them expressing their need to have a son for them and for, by their wives or for themselves or whatever. I have not met even one guy. This is my experience. I'm telling you guys. I've not met even one guy, okay? What I even see in this generation now is that a lot of men are more obsessed with having girls than having boys. I don't, I don't even know. It's like the tides have changed. Things have shifted now. A lot of men are actually like... I need a girl in my life. I need a, I need a female child. But sadly, women are the ones that are still carrying male children on their head like load. Okay? And it's so sad. Why I say it's so sad is that I'm just like, Chai, so this woman now, like, Chai, at your age, you know, after, after all what you've gone through in this life, whatever you've accomplished, I don't know them personally, but whatever you've accomplished in this life, so somewhere in your mind, you feel like your brothers, your husband, your male friends, your colleagues, your cousins that are all male you some somewhere in your mind you believe that they are inherently more valuable than you because you're a woman chai is 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 really really sad and i'm being serious right now it's really sad that a woman feels that like if you don't have a male child your your you don't, you're not, you're not, you don't really have children yet. Like, your, your family is not complete if you don't have a male child. And it's so sad because, me personally, I'm not even going to deny it. I want a male child. I've said it before. I, I've, always, I've always wanted a girl and a boy. But the one I know, the one I wanted badly, I, was, I, I always wanted a girl. Let me not even lie. I always wanted female children. But I just said, I want a male child just so that I'll know what it feels like to have a son. I mean, no, but I don't think anybody will, be, will say, ah, I don't have any boy at all or any girl at all. It's just, I just want to know what it feels like to have a son. That's just me. There's nothing, it's not about placing any more value on any child, you know. Anyway, let me continue this, her comments. Um, she says, uh, what you regret more? Wait. What did she say? Go give a male child to complete it. Think about it before doing what you regret. More men value male children a lot. No matter how much they love, they love you. They need male children a lot. Please do not give chance for your hobby getting another outside his wish. Outside his wish. My advice may sound you bad, but I love you and I'm telling you with experience, try and get one again. Three kids is not too much. You will take care of them very well by God's grace. I'm not looking at by God's grace here. I'm not going to bring into the, into, children into this world and be planning to take care of them by God's grace. I'm sorry. I'm not saying that. Of course, so every day I pray for my kids. Every day I pray for God's provision, his, prov um, his provision, his protection, his guidance, his, you know, love upon them and protection, everything. I pray for it. I pray for God's grace, you know. I, I wish them well. I prophesy on their lives. But I'm not going to go and go and have sex and bring children into this world just based on God's grace. When, when my bank account is empty, I've not done anything positive with my life. I don't even have enough, enough money to take care of the children that I have. I'm not going to bring more children into this world because by God's grace. That That is, that is what is putting Nigeria where it is today. That's why, that's why Nigeria is overpopulated. That's why... 90% of Nigerians are living under poverty rate. Are busy. 90, I don't know the statistics here, but I know that a lot of Nigerians are actually very, very poor. They're not, not just slightly kind of poor. A lot of Nigerians are really, really very, very poor, okay? <laughs> okay? So I'm not going to do by God's grace to bring a child. And nobody should please do by God's grace in bringing a child. That's why you see a woman in a village... Some of them, useless husbands are just drinking and smoking on the streets and they'll still have seven, eight, nine children because by God's grace. Some of them are even bringing children into this world because one will be successful, as in... <laughs> you are, you are, it's like you're playing uh, gambling. You're gambling. Like at least if I bring seven, one, one go make them. One go manage make them. At least one. I can't do that. Okay, and that is a very, very ignorant way of saying things. Okay. Anyway, now going back to that. Um, um, what did she even say again? Sir? Because I'm even tired of addressing this comment already. She said, um, "More men value male child, no matter how much they love you. They need male children. First of all." Because I even got this conversation one that said, as an Igbo, a tip, an Igbo girl, you know how important Igbo, you know how important male children are to Igbo men. First of all, let me tell you, I'm not one of those women who go through life thinking that I will change myself so that my husband will not cheat or will not go and have children outside. Like, I'll try and get a male child so that he will not have children outside. I'll try and look prettier or do this and do that or, do, or achieve this or achieve that so that my husband will not cheat. I am not one of those women. <laughs> Sorry, wrong channel. I am not one of those women. Anything any grown-ass man wants to do, 
he is free to do it, okay? God will not come and judge me for the sins of my husband, okay? So I'm not one of those women who will say, oh, you know, you have to try, you have to make your own money so the man will not cheat, you have to contribute so that he will not see you as a liability, you have to take care of yourself and look pretty and lose, your, and lose weight so that your husband will not leave you, you have to do this one, you have to bring male children, you have to, you have to. I'm not one of those women, wrong channel, okay? I live my life the way I want to live it because it pleases me, first of all, okay? If I do things to please my husband, it's because I, it pleases me to please my husband. It's not like I'll displease myself or I'll inconvenience myself or I'll give myself stress or I'll, I'll put myself under, you know, severe trauma or, or stress just because I want, I, I want to hold my husband. I'm not one of those women, though, like, if, I, if we had more women like me, things like Kayamata will not sell. It will not sell. <laughs> <laughs> they will not sell. I am not one of those women. So, like I said, wrong, wrong person, wrong channel to be, to be giving those kind of advice, first of all. And number two, what many people don't even know is that my husband is not the typical Igbo man. He's not. Okay, I don't even know what the typical Igbo man is, sir, because nowadays Igbo men are, are coming in all shapes and forms and sizes and ideologies and, you know, creed and whatever. Okay, so I don't, I don't even know what the typical Igbo man is anymore. But let's just say, going by African magic, which most of you are trying to uh, um, project on me, okay? Going by your African magic stories, my husband is not the typical Igbo man, okay? My husband is not the kind of person that does things because society deems it proper. <laughs> in fact, uh, that's one of the battles that I know that. I have lost. I don't even try to fight that battle again. He's not a kind of person that does things because society deems this is how things should be. In fact, he's a kind of person that if society says A, he'll go and do B. Like he, he dares society to come and come, come and beat me in my house. <laughs> you know, he's that kind of person. So, and you know, and so when I see people making such comments, like, you know, I'm like, don't project the fact that you married Kanayo or Kanayo does not mean that you should not come and project it on my on my own marriage. Okay, I'm sorry. Don't come and project it. If your husband cheated on you and went to go and have ch children out of wedlock. Fine. Okay, what of when I stayed four years without having kids? Why didn't he go and have kids out of wedlock? Why did he have to wait until after I now have two kids? Then now because, oh, she doesn't have a boy. Let me now go and have kids. Let me now go and have boys out of wedlock. And the funny thing is that there are a lot of women who had boys and girls, seven children, seven, boy and girl everywhere, and their husbands still went and had kids out of wedlock. So what do we explain to that about that? Okay, okay let's even forget about that one. What of women who do not have children at this point? What should they do? They should go and kill themselves. It's not even a matter of whether he likes boy or girl. It's a matter of that they don't even have kids. What if I do not have kids? Is it because God now blessed me and now have kids and now start choosing? And now start feeling some type of way because it's only girls that I have. What if I do not have children? What if I didn't have children? Would I, would I go and jump inside lagoon because I didn't have children? It's women like this that, that, you know, treat other women who don't have kids with so much... I don't know, in such a way that the women will, will, will be sad and depressed. It's women like this. You're coming to tell me about uh, having male children, this one, that. And I'm just like, why are people thinking like this? It's 2020. The world is about to end. Instead of you to be thinking about how you go with first flight to heaven. Because if you miss that first flight, chances of you taking first second flight is going to be very, very hard. Okay, I'm, I'm saying this, but it's not funny. Chances of taking second flight is going to be very, very hard. You will face a lot of hardship and sorrows in this life if you miss that first, first flight to heaven. Instead of you to focus on trying to meet up with the first flight, you are here telling another woman that she, if she doesn't have a child, that her husband can go out and go and do, I'm just like, oh God, kind of things that worry people there, I, I don't understand. Anyway, I can't even continue reading her comment. I think it's high time we talk to ourselves as women and just stop this rubbish because it might sound funny, but a lot of women have this mindset. It's just that many people are not vocal about it. And to be honest, I don't blame them. I'm not even saying men don't have this mindset. Some men might have this mindset. But at least they are wise enough to keep short about it or keep it to themselves, okay? There's a saying that it is better for you to keep quiet and be taught a fool than for you to open your mouth and prove them right, okay? <laughs> and someone sent me an email about inheritance. God forbid if anything happens to your husband today, you know how in-laws are. I was just like... <sighs> First of all, nothing is about to happen to my husband, okay? Like, like I said, we are both going on first flight to heaven. And if Jesus Christ does not come before, if Jesus Christ does not come early enough, we are both going to be attending our kids' graduation ceremonies, the birth of their children, the birth of their children's children. We are going to be there, two of us together, eh? When we'll be touring the world. We are going to be there, <laughs> like life. We've already made the plan. So, nothing is about to happen to my husband. But God forbid something happens to someone's husband, okay? Now, first of all, I wouldn't have married a man who 
if anything happens to him, me and my children will be in jeopardy because I gave birth to girls. I couldn't admire such, such a man. Like, and you can't tell me you don't know that such a man, you, you can't tell me you don't know that a man has that kind of mindset before you marry them. I'm, I'm, somehow you will know, you know men who think that way and men who do not think that way. Conversations. I don't know what you could do when you are when you are dating people or when you are, you know, caught during your culture. I don't know what you could do, but from conversations, I know that he's not that kind of man. I know and I have total knowledge and total control of everything that happens in this house. And again, let's even think about this thing logically. Is there any business? Is there any money, any job, any whatever, any property that only a, only a male child can manage? Is there anything like that that this thing, you know, and I'm talking about a size tradition where, oh, the, the father's land must go to the son or whatever. Aside that, because we don't even have any, any land in any village, so <laughs> even if we do, we don't even care, we don't even know where it is, we don't care. We don't have any land in any village, so aside land that we don't even have, is there any property now that my husband will have that he will say, ah, if anything happens to us today, oh, there's no child to pass it on to because we have two daughters. I don't understand. So where does this argument come from? Yeah, is it that, is it that people don't know that times have changed? I think that's the problem. A lot of people don't know that times have changed. A lot of people still think that we are, we are stuck in 1960. Times have changed. Things, things are changing. People are no more thinking the way many of you, many of you think that they should think. A child, is, a child is a child. What matters is how you raise your child. That's what matters. It's how you raise your child. Like I said, if, any, if, I want to, if I want a son today, the only reason why I want a son is because I want to know how it feels to have a son because they are both different genders. I mean, male and female. Finish. Now, aside that, I'm not even going to adopt a child. Because I remember talking about adoption. I'm not even going to adopt a child based on the child's gender. It's not cloth. It's not show and bag. I'm not going to be choosing. It's not like we're choosing blue or pink. Choose one. Blue or pink. Mm, yeah, I like blue. I already have pink. I don't need pink. Let me choose blue. No. This is a human being I'm bringing into my life to become a part of my life. So when I'm choosing a child to adopt, it's going to be based on God's direction for me. So it can even be a girl. It can be a boy. It can be a girl. I'm not going to go and start adopting a child based on the child's gender because the reason why I'm bringing that child into my household is just because I want to take care of a child who has no one else to take care of them, not because I want a boy. But for me, in fact, if I don't know. I just feel like if I choose a child because I, because I want a boy, God will punish me for it. <laughs> God will not punish me, child. But I feel like... If I do that, I'm, that means I'm just doing it because I want to complete. So I don't know how to explain it. That is a very selfish reason for bringing a child into your life. That's how, that's how I see it anyway. So it's going to be based on God's leading. If God leads me to a female child that needs help and I see that, oh, I want to bring this child into my life, I bring the child. If, if he leads me to a boy, all well and good. Are they selling ice cream? That smell sounds like ice cream, ice cream truck. <laughs> Do we have ice cream trucks in Potakot? Who is even going to buy? Me, I'm not buy, Sha. Anyway, the ice cream truck has come to them that should stop rambling and just end this video. So, that's just my video for today. I know this video did not even go as planned, but, you know, whatever, man, whatever. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'd like to know your thoughts. Please leave your thoughts in the comment section. If you like this video, I'm sweating. We don't have light. Anyway, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.